Hello everyone, I am Froilin from St. Xavier's College and today I will be making an in-depth presentation on the microbial fuel cell as a green energy alternative. Ever increasing energy demand has induced fossil fuel consumption. Almost every country in the world uses fossil fuels. In the statistical review of World Energy 2020, from the primary energy sources, oil accounted for 33.1%, gas 24.2% and coal for 27%, adding up to a total of 84.3% of the world's energy consumption from fossil fuels. Consequently, fossil fuels induce pollution and global warming. The global carbon emissions from fossil fuels has tremendously peaked in the last decade and is driving the world towards an unprecedented high and potentially devastating energy crisis. Therefore, water and energy securities are considered as major concerns in the present scenario. The microbial fuel cell MFC is gaining popularity as a promising tool for simultaneous waste treatment and current generation without polluting the environment. Today, we will have a look at MFCs in detail. So let me start at the main basic question. What is a fuel cell? A fuel cell is an electrochemical device which uses fuel to make electricity through a chemical reaction. Now fuel cells convert the free energy of a chemical reaction into electrical energy. The most common type of fuel cell is the hydrogen fuel cell, which uses hydrogen to produce electricity. Now under the fuel cells, I am going to be talking about the microbial fuel cell. In the MFC, the chemical reaction is replaced by microbial reactions and the fuel is replaced by bioorganic load. Microbial fuel cells use biomass such as sugars to make electricity by bacteria. Now, so biomass breaks down into carbon dioxide and water when exposed to oxygen. However, in the absence of oxygen, bacteria can still partially break down biomass to form CO2 and other small compounds. These types of bacteria are known as anaerobic bacteria. Some anaerobic bacteria, known as electrogens, can break down biomass and water to produce carbon dioxide plus hydrogen ions plus electrons. Now in the MFC, these electrons will be used to generate electricity. Next, let's move on to the working of the microbial fuel cell. A microbial fuel cell consists of two half cells immersed in water. In the first half cell, bacteria feed on biomass, often known as the substrate and produce hydrogen ions and electrons. The bacteria live on the surface of the electrode and this electrode is known as the anode because electrons flow out of it. The hydrogen ions mitigate through a semi-permeable membrane into the cathodic chamber while the electrons must travel through an electric circuit through an electric load like a light bulb and then enter the cathodic chamber. The overall reaction for the anode is shown here. So biomass plus, plus water equals to carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions and electrons which travel from here. Now after passing through the load, these electrons come to the other half of the cell and enter the cat cathode. This half cell is exposed to air so that when oxygen can enter through the cell, it can bind with the electron and the hydrogen atoms to make H2O to form water. The overall reaction for the cathode is shown here. Oxygen plus the hydrogen ions plus the four electrons to form H2O. That's how you generate power in this system. And it's a really simple system in concept. There's just two electrodes binded by a circuit and it generates electricity and you can even throw in some wastewater in here and the biomass will feed on the electrode. Now let's have a look at the mechanisms for the electron transfer. In the MFC, our main interest 
lies at how the electron is transferred. The more we study about this mechanism, the more electrons we could generate and transfer leading to a higher power output. Basically, there's two types of electron transfer mechanisms. There is an indirect MFC and there is a direct electron transfer. So this is the indirect mechanism, which means the microorganism does not have the capacity to transfer the electrons. So it depends on a chemical mediator or an external mediator. Uh, in this case, we are looking at methyl biogen, which picks up the electron, transfers it to the anode, deposits the electrode and then the mediator comes back to the central mechanism and is discarded. So in this case, we are using non-electrogenic bacteria because they cannot themselves transfer the electron. So they need a mediator. On the other hand, we have a direct mediator driven microbial fuel cell. In this type of fuel cell, we have electrogens. We have soluble mediator producing electrogenic bacteria, for example, pseudomonas. Now they simply generate the electrons, transfer it themselves to the anode, deposit it here and then come back and the cycle keeps on repeating. So now let's look at the different parts of the microbial fuel cell. These are the anode, the cathode, the proton exchange system and the electrode catalyst. The electrode catalyst may not always be applicable but the anode, cathode and proton exchange system have to be manufactured with these specific certain materials. Another point is that the anode and the cathode can be made of the same type of material. So for anode, we have graphite, graphite felt, carbon paper, etc. And similarly, for cathode, we have the same, more or less the same elements. Now, the proton exchange system elements, this is where it gets a bit tricky. The exchange system may be a membrane or it might be a salt bridge or it might be some electrolyte. Uh, the electrode catalyst is not really used anywhere, but it is important for the perfect transfer of electrons and the electron on the anode. Thus, these are the types of materials used in the electrode catalyst and in general all the materials used for the industrial process to make a microbial fuel cell. Now we will have a look at some of the microorganisms that are used for the working of the microbial fuel cell. These are some of the examples that I have noted down in my table. Uh, Shivanella putrefaciens, Geobacter sulfur reducens, Rhodopharax ferri reducens and I have put in a mixed seawater culture. So these cultures uh, have this much the current and the power output is shown here. Uh, the different types of substrates and the materials in the anode are given here and the authors uh, who have referenced these, uh, these, this data. So from this table, it is very clear to us that either pure microbial culture can be used or a substrate, maybe the pure or a mixed culture could be used. Um, with mixed cultures, there is a data notation which shows that there is more power output and more resistance to bacteria. However, in pure cultures, some of them give a, give a major output, but the electron transfer mechanism is a bit slower. Next, we will have a look at the parameters which affect the MFC operations. The microbial fuel cell is dependent on a number of parameters. First one is the electrode material. Selected material influences the performance of the MFC because electron transfer takes place through the anode. So the material of the anode matters a lot. pH buffer and electrolyte. pH buffer and electrolyte is required to maintain the pH. Microbes need a certain range of pH for their growth and other microbial activities. And it also helps with the transfer of electrons. So electrolyte is very, very important. Third is the proton exchange system. Like I mentioned earlier, um, this system will be able to reduce the proton losses. So the performance of the system overall uh, will generate a higher power output. Next is operating conditions in the anodic chamber. Uh, like I said earlier that we have certain type of microorganisms. They have different specific conditions. Some of them need a certain pH. Some of them need presence of toxic elements. So all of these things um, demand the operating conditions in the anodic chamber and similarly there are 
uh, specific specifications for operating conditions in the cathodic chamber as well because hydrogen ions have to pass through the membrane and have to generate electricity. Now type and composition of substrate. Say we have used a specific type of microorganism which are toxic to another type of substrate hence the performance will vary. Next moving on to type of oxidant used in cathodic chamber. It is a deciding factor for the transfer of hydrogen ions and the transfer of electrons. Presence and absence of catalyst. This is the final point. So if we use some catalyst on the anode surface and the performance increases, it acts as a mediator for the transfer of electrons. Now we will have a look at the applications of MFC. Now microbial fuel cell is mainly used for wastewater treatment, hence the concept waste to watts. So wastewater contains billions of bacteria or microbes that break down organic matter to produce electrons. These involve a wide range of electroactive bacteria which can enzymatically degrade a variety of wastewater from different sources. So we have domestic, industrial and agricultural sources of wastewater. A large number of recalcitrant wastes. Recalcitrant wastes include dyes, pesticides, heavy metals, polyalcohols, heterocyclic compounds, all of these materials produced by the industry. Now these pollutants pose a threat to the environment and the natural habitat when discharged without treatment. MFC provides a solution to this problem since it can oxidize or reduce these materi materials bioelectrically, bioelectrochemically in anode or the cathode respectively and convert them into a harmless product. As far as power generation is concerned, the MFC cannot compete with our uh, common fuel cells but further research shows the true potential of microbial fuel cells mainly for wastewater treatment purposes. Another application of the MFC is a BOD biosensor. Now what is a BOD? The biochemical oxygen demand is an index of organic content and gives an indication on how much oxygen would be required for microbial degradation. So high BOD of a sample indicates the extent of pollutant substance present in it. Now usually this takes more than 5 days but with MFC um, this could be a very very good alternative because wastewater is used as fuel and the current produced in the MFC is directly proportional to the concentration of the substrate oxidized. So MFCs can be used as biosensors. Okay, next I am going to talk about the improvement efforts. Extensive work is going on to improve the performance of the MFC. Some points are mentioned here. Um, number one is adding a suitable metal ion and using metal reducing organisms. So metal ions improve the conductivity and the electron transfer while the metal reducing microorganisms also help in producing more electron. Doping of catalysts on the electrode. The electrode in this case is the anode and some catalysts are tested or doped to in improve its performance. Increasing anode area and decreasing inter electrode distance. So if the inter electrode distance is reduced, in that case the transfer loss is reduced and if we increase the anode area then the total electricity production will increase. Uh, next is using more efficient microorganisms. Uh, so like I said earlier there are a variety of microorganisms that are yet to be discovered and they might have a better power and current output. Using more suitable oxidant in cathode, again this will help to produce more hydrogen ions and more electrons. Now in conclusion to my presentation, um, I would love to say that MFC technology is an upcoming popular research area which can be implemented to meet energy demand and water requirements for the agricultural sector. The major breakthrough in MFC research are air cathodes, there are soil cathodes and there are, there are various number of MFC research ideas that have been generated in the past decade. Um, in the last few decades power output from MFC has also increased by several orders of several magnitudes. In the next few decades we can hope for futuristic technology powered simply by microbial fuel cells. However, it is important to increase it further for useful applications from a scalable level with innovative design and cost effective materials. MFC is coming up as a promising technology to treat wastewater. 
still several challenges remain which need to be overcome to commercialize this technology. Thank you. That's the end of my presentation. Um, these are my following references. Thank you.